What's going on friends? One of the biggest complaints about Harley Davidson motorcycles today is that it basically takes a special tool to do anything on the motorcycle, especially when it comes to the engine. If you're looking for a Harley Davidson that you can actually work on in your own garage without a plethora of expensive special tools, the best engines out there are the Evo powered Harley Davidsons. Whether that be a big twin or a Sportster, they cannot beat the Evo when it comes to simplicity, longevity, and the ease of just being able to work on them yourself in your own garage without having to pay somebody. Now one of the biggest things about the Evolution engine is just how simple it is. There's just not as many moving parts in these engines when we compare them to the twin cams and the Milwaukee 8s. Not to mention, pretty much all your Evos are all carbureted. That right there eliminates a lot of hassle and a lot of expensive tools. To do anything with a fuel injected bike, you have to have a fuel tuner. You have to have some way to access the ECM, to write fuel maps, change the timing, pretty much make any kind of change to the bike. You're going to be looking at basically anywhere from a, well, roughly about four to $500 investment to get a power vision, to get an FP3, FP4, whatever your tuning device of your choice is. There's really no way around that. You just can't take a screwdriver to the old carburetor because it doesn't have one. You got a throttle body and it's electronically controlled, not to mention the plethora of sensors out there. Yes, now one could argue that there were some carbureted twin cam 88s, but the 88's engine is definitely far from simple when it's compared to the Evolution engines. Guys, please don't forget, if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Now, one thing about the Evolution engines that we all sorely miss is the gear-driven cam. Everything in there was gear driven. There was no chains, there was no tensioners, there was nothing to mess with. That was one of the biggest things about the Evolution engine is it was just that simple gear driven design. Not to mention, we go down to the bottom end, Temkin bearing bottom end, easily, easily assembled crankshafts. They're not pressed together. So actually finding a shop that can actually redo the crank on an Evo engine, that is a lot simpler than finding a shop that has the ability to press those cranks apart and press them back together. Now, maybe one of the most complicated parts about the Evolution engine was the Temkin bearing bottom end. It is a lot stouter than the old roller bearing bottom end that they went to when they started pressing the cranks. But with the Temkin bearing bottom end, you have to make sure you set the backlash up correctly. And that was one thing that Harley Davidson was getting away from trying to get more done, do it cheaper by pressing the cranks and slapping them together with a roller bearing. Back in the day with the Evolution engine during assembly, they actually had to set the backlash up on those Temkin bearing bottom ends. And that wasn't a bad thing. They ran true for years because if they did it, is basically going to trash that cam out and all the gears driving everything associated with it. Now, as you know, on the twin cam, going to a gear drive, even on the Milwaukee 8, that is one thing everybody would love to do. But the issue with the twin cam and the Milwaukee 8 is the crank run out. The crank run out is just too high from the factory to actually slap a gear driven cam in there. If you check a pinion run out on a twin cam or a Milwaukee 8, it's not going to be 0 .002. It's going to be well above that. And Harley Davidson specs, I believe they're up to 14 thousandths now. It used to be 12. So when the crank started running a little less true and getting a little wobbly, instead of actually correcting the issue, Harley Davidson just basically put in the manual, raise the allowable tolerance. Does it work for what it is? Yeah, it works for what it is for a long time, but you get a lot of miles on the bike and that issue really becomes apparent. That is definitely not something that we have with the Evolution engine. Not to mention with the Evolution engine, the parts are super cheap when they're compared to twin cam and Milwaukee 8 parts. Are you going to get the power out of an Evolution engine that you can get out of a twin cam or a Milwaukee 8? Not without a lot of work. And it's definitely not something that you want to do on a stock set of cases. Because as you all know, there are some issues with the stock cases, that very narrow cylinder spacing, when you start getting high compression in there, and you really start building some monster engines on these things, the cases could either crack or the studs could actually pull right out of the cases that are actually holding your cylinders and your heads down. But that's not to say you can't take an Evolution engine and actually build it up and get some decent horsepower and torque out of it. Just a basic cam swap on an Evolution engine with a good exhaust and a good jet kit, and you get it dialed in about best you can on the butt dyno, run it up and down the road like the good old days. Run it down the road, come back, check the plugs, change the jetting, dial it in. 
Those were the good old days of what you could do in your garage. And that's what the Evo still allows you to do. If you got a little basic mechanical knowledge, there's nothing on an Evo that you can't do. Now, when it comes to parts on the Evo, as I mentioned, we have a lot less working parts in these engines. We don't have cam plates. We don't have those internal oil pumps in the cases. When you go to buy a cam, you're only looking at a couple hundred bucks, depending on which cam you buy, because you're not buying a cam set. Same thing's kind of true with the Milwaukee 8 with the single cam in there, but on the Milwaukee 8, you still want to worry about that cam plate, and you might want to upgrade to a better tensioner system in it, or even a gear drive, but as I mentioned, you probably want to do a whole motor at that point when it comes to those because you're going to want a crank that's going to run true and you're going to be converting the bottom back in, basically retrofitting it back to what the Evo already has with the Timken Berry bottom end. Now, even on an Evolution engine, as I mentioned, power output's not going to be quite as much as we could get with a twin cam or a Milwaukee 8, but it can still be pretty decent. With just a high performance cam in there, you could probably see 75 horsepower out of one of these engines, maybe a little more. And if you really are dedicated to the Evolution engine, there is a plethora of aftermarket cases out there, and you could put a crank in them, you could put bigger bores on them. There's all kinds of things that could be done on the aftermarket with the Evolution engine. Not to mention, if you're working on these bikes by yourself in your garage, you don't have to buy a lot of special tools. When it comes to the twin cam and the Milwaukee 8, there's a lot of special tools, a lot of fixtures that you're gonna need for basically removing, installing the cam bearings. There's all kinds of different tools out there that are specific to those motors. Do you absolutely need them? Eh, not necessarily one could argue, but they are nice to have and they do make it a lot easier to work on. When it comes to the Evo engine, you don't need all that. Just a basic set of engine tools, some pullers and hand tools. That's all it takes to maintain and build an Evolution engine. The other big benefit to the Evolution engine is just the knowledge base out there. Any Harley Davidson shop, worth its salt, independent shop, they're gonna have somebody back there that is an absolute expert with the Evolution engine. Everything on these engines is mechanical. There's really not any electronics on them unless you have a fuel-injected Evolution engine. Now, that is an issue when it comes to the Evos is that the fuel-injected big twins, they never got the Delphi system. They had the old Magneti Morelli system. It was a good system at the time. But the issue with it was is that it was very temperamental and it was tricky to work on. When it worked, it worked great. But if it started having issues, the issues were very hard to track down, they were very hard to tune, and basically if they started having issues, you were almost better off just going ahead and converting the bike over to a carburetor with a single fire ignition. If you're having issues with your fuel injected Evo with the Magneti Morelli system, that's the best thing you can do. If you have a Magneti Morelli that's working great, leave it alone, don't mess with it. Because when it starts having problems in this day and age, you're either going to be chasing issues with used parts that may have the same problem that, that you're trying to fix. You might swap out for a used part and still have the issue because the used part you bought could be bad. Who knows? And there are no new parts available for that old fuel injection system. So any issues with the fuel injection, Magneti Morelli, definitely single fire ignition, definitely a carburetor. Speaking of carburetors, Evolution engines for the most part were carbureted, especially if they had a CV carb on them. Those things were great. And arguably, a lot of people would say a well-tuned CV carburetor would run just as well as fuel injection, even at elevation. If they were dialed in right, yeah, you might have a little spit and sputtering depending on the elevation changes, but for the most part, they ran great. And I mean, there's also the debate about switching over to the Makuni. Some people swear by the Makuni for extra horsepower and that it works just as well as the CV carburetor, maybe even better with less parts. But then again, you didn't have the accelerator pump. And there, I got a whole other video on the Makuni versus this old CV carb. But personally, I like the CV carbs. Unless you're going for performance, then the Makuni seems to be a little better at that point. But a lot of guys report back that the Makuni carb absolutely eats the fuel, but the bike runs great. So pick your poison there, whether you want a Makuni or the CV carb. Personally, if you're just doing some street riding with a cam in there, you got a good exhaust, you got a good jet kit in the carburetor, you, generally that CV carb is just going to be perfect for you for everyday riding, especially if you're going across country with elevation changes. 
Personally, I feel like the CV carb does a little better with elevation changes versus the Makuni. So now guys, I want your opinions. Do you guys feel like the Evolution engine is the new modern classic? Do you think this engine is going to be what the shovel head is to a lot of guys now? The Evo engine is going to be the go-to for as long as we can still find them out there. Or do you guys think the Milwaukee 8 or the Twin Cam's eventually going to take over as the new modern classic surpassing the Evo? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. But anyhow guys, that's all I've got for you this week. If you guys enjoyed the video, please don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. But till next week guys, you stay safe on the streets, ride smart, dodge those cars, and I'll catch you guys back here next week with a brand new video. Thanks for watching. Thank you.